This third part, we will talk about the dynamics of time. Time doesn't really exist. We only experience time because of the shadows are moving on the wall. And this is perhaps one of the most important movements. Our mother planet is rotating around her own axis in a period we call 24 hours. And in that daily time, we find four phases. Afternoon, evening, night and morning. And they correspond to the four energies. Night is the earth energy, morning is the air energy, afternoon is the water energy, and evening is the fire energy. Here we find midday and we find midnight, exactly half the day period and half the night period, because the upper half is night, the lower half is the day period. And the day period starts at sunrise and ends at sunset, and the other side is, of course, the night side. But we can also depict it like this in a lemon skate. Now we see that the clock is going like this and then like this. And here we find in the middle midday, or in Latin meri diem, diem cut into half. And this is midnight. And we can see that the, this is going clockwise, just like the hands of our normal clock. And this, wise, the, and this circle, the hand goes counterclockwise. And this is a special clock where indeed the hands go counterclockwise. And now we can also understand why there's so much confusion about 12 a.m. and 12 p.m. Yes, because it's at the same crossing. And we divide it, this whole period, in two times 12 hours, which means that every uh, full circle is 12 hours. And 12 is indeed the number for a full circle. And that knowledge from 12 relating to a full circle was already known in Sumeria 5,000 years ago. Here we see another orbit. Terra is moving around Helios in a year time. And because the axis of rotation is not perpendicular to the uh, ecliptic, to the plane of the ecliptic, it makes an angle of about 23 and a half degrees, um, we have the four seasons. Because most energy is now coming here to the south, so it is winter on the north, northern hemisphere and uh, summer on the southern, and here is the opposite. Now it's summer on the northern hemisphere. And this is the flow of the yearly time. Again, we see the four phases. Winter representing earth energy, spring, air energy, water with summer, and fire with autumn. At the equinoxes, the amount of daylight and nighttime is exactly the same. So you could say Light and darkness are exactly uh, the same strength. Here at the solstices, the dynamics is shifting. And at both solstices, the, the dynamics of light and darkness is not changing for about three days. In a year time, in a circle of Terra around Helios, the stars behind Helios shift. They continuously shift. What we have done in ancient times, we have named the stars during a period behind the sun. And we, named, we gave a name to each constellation of stars. And again, we divided the full circle into 12 parts. At this moment, the sun is to the left side. And that is the moment when the uh, constellation of Cancer starts which means that the summer is starting at the northern hemisphere. The other side, when the sun is at this direction, the, tropic of Can uh, the, the constellation of Capricorn starts, and that is the moment when winter starts at the northern hemisphere. And that's why these tropics are mentioned. These 12 periods, we can also put them in the lemniscate, the 12 constellations. And then we see that each constellation is related to a type of energy. There are three types related to Earth, which is Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. Three to air, three to water, and three to fire. We see Cancer all the way here, which is the start of summer at the hum a northern hemisphere. And we see Capricorn at the other side, which is the start of winter at the northern hemisphere. 
And we see also that the, the sequence is according to the apple, because we first have air, uh, earth, then air, then water, and then fire, and it continues. So the sequence is exactly right. I think our forefather knew about the sequence. When we look up, we see that the stars are always shifting, every day, every night, but also during a period of a year. Except one, except this one, the polar, pole star, or the polaris, because this, this star is exactly in alignment with the Earth axis. And every, everyone knows how to find it. You go to the plow or the, the Big Dipper, and you take the backside and you uh, make it seven times as long, and the star you end up then is the pole star. And then you know where the north is, and you can also navigate. That is at this moment. Now the Earth axis is pointing towards the pole star. But about 13,000 years ago, it pointed to a totally different star, the Vega star, in the, the most brightest star in the uh, constellation of Lyra. That means that Earth is tumbling. It makes a tumbling movement, very slow. A full circle takes about 26,000 years. And Plato referred to that cycle as the Great Year. Every 72 years, this cycle goes further one degree. So that's how slow it goes. And the direction of this cycle is opposite to the normal yearly cycle. That's why it's called a precession. The normal one is a succession, but this is a precession, precession of the equinoxes. And again, this period, this full cycle, has been divided into 12 different parts. And they have the same names as the monthly constellations because the axis is tilted towards each of the constellations. It's leaning towards each of the constellations. That's why they have the names. And at this moment, we are about here. The constellation of the, A the Aeon of Aquarius is about to start. So you could say we have a great year of 25,920 years, which is... Uh, also four great seasons, and a great season is about six and a half thousand years long. And we have the East Aeon, which is a little bit more than 2,000 years long, 2,160 years long. Here we see those 12 constellations again, those aeons again. And now we see that again, the order of earth, air, water and fire is exactly right. Because this period starts with the sign of Taurus which is an earth sign. Aquarius is an air sign. Scorpio is a water sign. And Leo is a fire sign. So again, the ordering, the sequence of the four energies is absolutely right. Our forefathers knew about this. And that's why they created a giant Leo, a giant lion. And I'm talking, of course, about the Sphinx, which is a huge lion made of stone. The Sphinx was made to help us remember the precession cycle, because it has very high impact on consciousness of humanity. 